In this lesson, I'm going to cover XAAS, anything as a service, which is not included in the NIST's standard definition of cloud computing. This video is brought to you by EpiPies Academy. Many cloud providers also offer other as a services apart from IAAS, PAAS, and SAAS. These are sometimes described as XAAS or anything as a service. Examples of these include DAAS, which is desktop as a service, DRAAS, which is disaster recovery as a service, BAAS, backup as a service, and storage as a service. And there's many more as well. Different cloud providers will provide different services. First example that we mentioned there was BAAS, Backup as a Service. This is suitable for small companies because it allows them to back up to an offsite location without having to go through the hassle of buying tape hardware and also transporting the tapes offsite every day. With Backup as a Service, the company has got their own on-premise solution. So they've got servers in their own office and those servers in their own office are backed up to storage which is at the cloud provider. So the customer, they often will not have any actual servers at the cloud provider, they just make use of the storage there. So we're doing that in the example here. You can see that customer A are backing up their servers to the cloud provider storage. We've also got a company B and they're doing the same thing. So from the cloud provider's point of view, there can be multiple customers backing up to the same storage system. So this gives us our resource pooling, which makes things more cost efficient and the provider can pass on those cost efficiencies to the customer. So this is often an attractive solution for small companies. Another example is DRAAS, Disaster Recovery as a Service. In the example here, we've got an active standby model. So the company have got their own on-premise solution. They've got their own servers there. And they also deploy minimal infrastructure at the cloud provider. So similar to that previous example of backup as a service, the customer is running their servers in their own office and they're just using the cloud provider as a disaster recovery solution. They don't have servers permanently being used over at the cloud provider. It's just for their disaster recovery. Data is replicated from the company office to the cloud provider storage. And if the company has a disaster at their company office, this means that they can quickly fail over to the cloud provider. So this, again, for small or medium-sized companies, this can be a really attractive solution for them because they would love to have a disaster recovery solution. So if they do have a problem, they can get back up and running quickly. But if they were going to do this to the traditional way of building their own disaster recovery data center and putting the infrastructure in there, that would obviously be hugely expensive. By using a cloud provider to give them that capability, they can get it for a much more feasible cost. Next example is DAAS, Desktop as a Service. Here, the customer has got thin clients in their location. What a thin client is, is it's basically a really low powered terminal. It doesn't have enough CPU, RAM, etc., resources to run a standard desktop operating system like Windows on there. Then the customer, they are using infrastructure at the cloud provider with hypervisors there and the virtual machines are running the normal user desktop. So this is different than what we would normally do with cloud services. With normal cloud services, typically we're going to be using the cloud environment to host our servers. With DAAS, we're using the cloud environment to host our normal user desktops. So the desktop operating system is running as a virtual machine at the cloud provider and we have got a thin client in our office that is used to connect to the cloud provider and run the desktop virtual machine from there. 
A reason that a customer would do this is it's going to save them money on technology refreshes. Because with a normal office, say we've got 3,000 users in there and we've got all of the PCs, well, those PCs get out of date. So every several years, we're going to have to replace all of those PCs. And this can be expensive. If we use a virtual desktop infrastructure like we're doing here, we don't have to replace those 1,000 PCs in our office. We just have to build new virtual machines at the cloud provider. And it's up to the cloud provider to have the underlying hardware that will support those desktops. So again, we are moving the cost from a capital expenditure cost that we have to pay over to a monthly operational cost, which can make things more cost efficient. The last example I want to cover is storage as a service. A well-known example of this is Amazon S3. With Amazon S3, you can use web-based storage over at AWS. You can use it to store things like files, images, etc. And again, this can be cost effective for you because Amazon have got pretty much unlimited amounts of storage. It saves you having to provide the storage yourself. Other examples of storage as a service, which are not normally called storage as a service, but they are, are Dropbox, Microsoft OneDrive, and Google Drive. And you're probably using some of those already yourself. Now, the reason that these examples are not included in the NIST's standard definition is that actually these could all fall under the other models that were covered in that definition. Like storage as a service, Dropbox, Microsoft OneDrive, Google Drive, these could be classed as software as a service. And the earlier examples I covered like desktop as a service and disaster recovery as a service are really types of infrastructure as a service. So it's not that there's anything missing in the NIST's definition. It does give a complete definition of all the cloud services. It's just that the providers like to also use XAAS because that can help with their marketing.